from sunny Montreal. It is indeed an honor for me to moderate this online press conference from the Convention Center in Montreal, where the world's biggest AIDS conference, the 24th International AIDS Conference or AIDS 2022 is taking place. Today, I welcome all of you to this online conference, which is being organized jointly by AIDS Society of India and Organized Medicine Academic Guild under the aegis of the 24th International AIDS Conference. With 101 months left to end AIDS by 2030, countries have to ensure that 100% people living with HIV know their status. 100% of them are receiving life-saving antiretroviral therapy among full spectrum of HIV care cascades and are virally suppressed also. In addition, 100% of people should have full access to HIV combination prevention options so that we can deliver on the zero new case target. Despite having scientifically proven tools and approaches that work and which can lead us to an AIDS-free world, we are far from reaching that goal. Our experts with us today will share their insights on how to accelerate progress towards ending AIDS. Without any further ado, I hand over the mic to the chair of this press conference, Dr. Ishwar Gilada. Dr. Gilada, as we all know, is a noted HIV expert from India and president of AIDS Society of India. He's also the governing council member from the Asia Pacific region of the International AIDS Society. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Shobaji. Uh, as you all know that we are here in Montreal for 24th International AIDS Conference. And this is happening after a gap of four years. Uh, because of two and a half years pandemic, no face-to-face -face meeting were possible. Even this is hybrid. In this situation, uh, even this press conference is uh, being conducted in a hybrid mode. Uh, mainly people are uh, all virtual. And here only three or four people are uh, sitting in the office. Now, when we talk about any goals which are set in, either by the World Health Organization or uh, UNAIDS, they are all set in because of the role of India. Uh, yes, it is important that new molecules should be found for any disease. And we really admire for those pharma companies which have done R&D and found these uh, molecules for ma management of HIV AIDS. And so much so that molecules are so strong, within two to three months time, people with HIV AIDS become undetectable. And undetectable is untransmittable. So this is a wonderful principle, but if these goals are to be achieved, uh, whatever uh, medicines are available from the uh, patent owner companies or uh, innovator companies, they are not able to reach out to people, particularly in the southern uh, half of the globe. And therefore, whatever goals will be made, they will be unachievable if there is no role of India to be played in this uh, situation. What India has done in last 20 years, precisely, or maybe 25 years, that whatever uh, new molecule come, India tries to make it a generic molecule and make it so much affordable that initially we used to think that India can make it affordable from 100 to 10, but currently it is 100 to 1 or even less than 1% cost. For example, the uh, best available 3-in-1 medicine was calculated at $10,452 per patient per year. And the lowest quoted cost from Indian medicine is $69. So you can imagine it is at 0.7% of international cost. So WHO or UNAIDS, when they want to set the goal, initially it was test and treat. It was also uh, uh, you uh, treat a person with HIV and the other person is already protected. So treatment as uh, prevention, uh, because a lot of preventive uh, measures have gone in place. They were effective, but they were not as effective as the ART. And then the goal of 90, 90, 90 came. That means 90% of the people who are HIV infected, they should know their status. 90% people who know their status, they should be on ART. And 90% who are on ART, they should have undetectable viral load. And that goal was to be achieved by 2020. It could not be because of the uh, credit can be given to COVID. And therefore, we uh, missed that goal. The second goal has been 95, 95, 95 by 2025. And the last goal is 100, 100, 100 by 2030. So as has been said in the intro, 
that we have 101 months left. Are we able to achieve that goal? Means all 100% people who are infected with HIV, they should know their status. 100% people who know their status, they should be on ART. And 100% those who are on ART, they should have undetectable viral load. For the last goal, undetectable viral load, the most important thing was doing viral load testing. And viral load testing was earlier unreachable, but most of the countries are now able to do viral load testing. And therefore, we are able to look at whether the third bit of the goal is achieved or not. Under this situation, whatever new molecules are made, all um, uh, innovator companies are scared of India for two things. Number one, if India uh, violates the patent and under patent versus patient uh, kind of regimen, where uh, patients are more important than patent, in that situation, India will violate patent and innovative companies cannot do anything because it's an emergency situation. So what they come, they come down to India, they have partners from pharma companies from India, they give them voluntary license. By giving voluntary license, they ensure one thing, that Indian marketed uh, drugs cannot go to innovator uh, countries uh, like USA, Europe, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. And they cannot even market those drugs here. Uh, they cannot publicize those drugs here. And under that kind of situation, Indian pharma companies sign those kind of contracts. But despite doing that, we are able to reach out to poor people, poor countries, and uh, so much so that currently 92% of antiretroviral therapy supply is from India. So you can imagine that entire global scenario of HIV AIDS minus India, what it could have happened. People could have died, died like ants and nothing could have been saved. So I think India has a great role to play. There will be hurdles. There will be newer molecules coming, like uh, cabotogravir is not available in India. Another time, so all newer molecules will be out of reach for poor people and poor countries, lower middle income countries. But India will make its uh, own way how to innovate those things, innovate a molecule and make it generic and make it cheaper. Uh, it's not, doesn't only stop there. It is also looking at COVID. It is looking at hepatitis B vaccine, uh, which are very, which were very expensive internationally. They were made available. Uh, hepatitis C treatment, hepatitis C treatment was also less than 1% of international cost. Uh, India could do that. So I, uh, you can imagine that it was $1,000 per uh, day therapy cost. $84,000 per three month therapy. And that India could do that in less than $250. We can imagine 0.3% of international cost. So India has its own role to play. Uh, we are thankfully, uh, people now started acknowledging the role of India and we would like to re-emphasize the role of India over here. Over to you, Shobha. Thank you, Dr. Gilada. Thank you to set the ball rolling focusing on India's role in achieving the 100-100-100 end AIDS target in the Global South. I'm now honored to welcome Dr. Beatrice Grinson, the president-elect of the International AIDS Society. She's a physician scientist with over three decades of experience in HIV research. She's also director of the STD AIDS Clinical Research Laboratory and principal investigator of the Fiocruz HIV Prevention and Therapeutic Clinic Trials Unit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Over to you, ma'am. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Dr. Gilada, for the kind invitation to participate in this, in this press conference today. The Global South countries have many issues in common. We concentrate the highest number of low and middle income countries where inequalities are still determining the maintenance of the HIV epidemic. ART scale, scale up do, over the years has improved as well as access to services. However, it's also fundamental to ensure the quality and sustainability of the programs implemented. Challenges and gaps remain, including stigma, discrimination and insufficient funding. India is globally recognized for its vast research and development capacity. India's international cooperation has been an answer to the global call for world leaders to come together for an urgent and coordinated global response. India, as one of the biggest generic producers, has been able to develop, produce, and export generic ARVs, which are key for allowing expanding accessibility to medicines. South-South co cooperation between emerging economies demand mutual beneficial effects for the member countries. 
grants, capacity building, trade, development, finances, and technical cooperation are some of the modalities of cooperation. Along the HIV epidemic, India has advocated for the availability of medicines and other tools across the globe through international cooperation and development of partnerships. Despite the increase in access to ARVs, the disproportionate distribution of the mortality and morbidity burden of AIDS between the poor and, and industrialized regions of the world reinforce the life versus profit, the intellectual property versus access and the innovation plus access debates. There are compelling factors that demand a reassessment of of policy framework for emergent South-South cooperation, a framework which is holistic and aims for generating health-driven research and development that would strike balance between promoting and protecting the right access to medicines. Beyond local production of pharmaceuticals and vaccines, should exist considerable South-South collaboration on the largest intellectual property and access for medicines policy issues, including alliances between civil societies and governments to push for shared interests in global policy making arenas, especially on trade intellectual property issues. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we could again see the major Indian leadership in advancing the technology of manufacturing vaccines that were instrumental to assist our countries in expanding access to COVID-19 vaccines, which highly contributed to save lives in the global south. Within the framework cooperation, India needs to further increase partnerships with less developed countries of the south to boost access to ARVs and other tools, helping us with political and policy expertise to boost access, reinforcing the importance of resilient healthcare systems. India's international cooperation has been an answer to the global call for world leaders to come together for an urgent and coordinated global response. Thank you. Thank you, Beatriz. Uh, Brazil has been a major partner for a long time for our South-South collaboration. And that's the reason that we have a BRICS moment. And in BRICS, uh, it starts with Brazil. Uh, R is Russia. Currently, Russia is silent, so we can say BRICS, India, um, China, and uh, South Africa. So in South-South collaboration, uh, we have done wonderful things. And with this kind of partnership, we are able to reach out to people. What do you show about uh, thank you once again, Dr. Beatrice. And our next speaker is Dr. Anne Dewar, Scientific Affairs okay. Director, HIV Vaccine Trials Network, and Professor at Vaccine and Infectious Disease Division, Fred Hutchinson, Seattle, USA, to say a few words. Welcome, Dr. Dewar. So yesterday at the uh, 2022 AIDS conference, we heard from UNAIDS uh, in their global AIDS update. And this update highlighted the that the response to HIV globally has stalled and that progress is slowing, in part because of many other world events in the past few years, including the COVID pandemic and the war in the Ukraine. So the promise for ending AIDS by 2020 is in danger. They pointed out that in 2021, every two to three minutes, an adolescent girl or young woman was infected with HIV. And every minute we lost a life to HIV AIDS. So it's really time for us to redouble our efforts globally and to speak to what the Global South can do in these efforts. What we know for ending the epidemic is the same everywhere. We need to increase implementation of what we know works. And this includes increasing treatment uh, and also increasing the preventive me measures such as pre-exposure prophylaxis in populations at risk. But we need to expand these efforts globally uh, and at reasonable prices in order to meet the challenge of ending the epidemic. So in terms of what India can do in these efforts, I think that India in the future will serve as a very important source of affordable generic medications as they have in the past. And in addition, India can really help us by showing the way for how to implement those changes that we know works. 
And this is part of a new science, which is increasingly recognized, the science of implementation science. This ad addresses the gap between what we know and what we do. And by closing these gaps, we can really redouble our efforts to fight the global epidemic of HIV infection. India, which has a very strong scientific community, is well placed to make progress in implementation science, to adapt many of the prevention interventions shown in other parts of the world and adapt them to low and middle income countries in the global south. So I think in these two ways, by helping provide reasonably priced drugs for treatment and prevention, and by showing us the best ways to bridge the no-do gap, India has a key role in the response of the global south to the pandemic. Uh, thank you, Anne. Uh, in her description, we should have described, but I can would like I would like to say that Dr. Andrew is born, brought up, and working in Northern Hemisphere, but her, her heart beats for Southern <laughs> Hemisphere, and she has a lot of projects in uh, so, uh, South America, particularly Peru, Chile, etc. So I think uh, we need uh, support of such people. Uh, where, wherever you are, it doesn't matter whether you are in South or not. Uh, we have to overcome these inequities and inequalities. And we have seen uh, day in and day out, even at this conference, a lot of people from Southern uh, Hemisphere, they could not get the visa. They could not uh, fly in for the conference, despite investing so much. Uh, the visa fee, uh, the courier fee, uh, their uh, tickets book, uh, ticket cancellation, nothing you get out of cancellation. In that kind of scenario, most meetings which are held in the North and uh, uh, the impacted communities are in the South. And we need to like to see that more and more meetings and conferences are now held in the southern part of the world. Uh, with this, again, over to you, Shobha. And carry on the next agenda. Thank you, Dr. Duer, for stressing on implementation science. And thank you, Dr. Gilada, for bringing up this, uh, uh, the North and South pride in the sense that conferences need to be held in the South and the visa problems which are faced uh, this year by many of even the scholarship holders. All right, now, uh, so we, we are hoping for a better future, which will lead eventually to the 100, 100, 100 goal. We are also fortunate today to have with us Dr. Gloria Alexander, Vice President of AIDS Society of India and Founder Director of ASHA Foundation. She is also on the organizing committee of the 24th International AIDS Conference. Welcome, Dr. Alexander, and over to you. It's a privilege indeed to be part of this press conference. Um, and it's also an honor and a privilege to know that India has been able to provide 92% of the world's requirement for uh, ART. And this was possible only because of the generic medicines that are being produced in uh, India. Uh, in order to achieve the 100-100 goal, there have been many obstacles in the way, unexpected obstacles, for example, the COVID-19 pandemic, and now we are looking at monkeypox. We don't know how far and how wide monkeypox will go, the monkeypox infection will go, and how it will impact all the programs and projects to decrease uh, the AIDS epidemic. I think another thing that we should remember is that India is the country with the world's third highest population of HIV. And over the years, we have been able to, so any decrease in HIV in India will definitely impact the targets. Uh, over the years, we've been able to reduce the number of uh, new infections by about 37% since 2010 and decrease the number of in deaths by about 66% since 2010. So that is a huge achievement. And this was possible only because of ART that we produced by India. But we have to remember that among the key populations, the seroprevalence of HIV continues to remain high. In India, it's between 1.5% to 6.25%. And that needs to be 
reduced before we can even think of achieving these targets. And that has become a difficult issue because as all of us know, the inequities that exist, and unless we have uh, a reduction in these inequities and political will, it's going to be very difficult for us to reach out to these targets of 100, 100, 100. Um, another thing that we have to think about is of course PrEP, again in the distribution of which there is inequity. More of the global north has received PrEP, less of the global south has received PrEP, and therefore you find more infections in global south than in global north uh, because of uh, this inequity in distribution as far as PrEP goes. Another feature that we should look at is self-testing. Because I think, and that hasn't moved very far in India, but self-testing is another strategy that can be used to, uh, you know, especially among the key populations, because uh, there was recently, we had a South uh, Asia Regional Symposium in which one of the presenters mentioned about how uh, uh, through telehealth medicine, they were able to, and counseling via the telephone, many of these, key populations were able to uh, do their HIV testing and 92% of them were even able to upload their results. And this is important because in that group, 5% of them were HIV positive, which is a very high um, percentage. So these are different strategies that we need to look at if we want to achieve uh, the 100-100 goal that we've set. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Glory. Uh, we had some glitches in the press conference. Initially, we thought when we got the allocation of this time is a prime time. And prime time is also prime time for our speakers. So one of our speakers, Dr. Anton uh, Pozniak, he has to be on another panel, which is IS panel at the conference. So he could not make it. Uh, we are now, floor is open. Uh, there, there are at least three of us available for answering questions. And uh, Bobby, as well as Shoba, they have gathered some of the questions and uh, some of the questions are coming online. So uh, I would request uh, Shoba ji to uh, read out the question and address them to particular person so that they can be answered. If they have a common question, then anybody of us can answer. Yes, yes. thank you. Uh, there's a question from Brian from the Star Kenya who says COVID, COVID negatively impacted progress on HIV and, uh, and the goals. But we are on, we were on the target, but were we on target even before COVID? 1990, in most countries was not achievable. So we have, we cannot blame COVID for uh, the lack of progress. So I think all the experts can respond to that. Dr. Gilada, would you like to respond? Yeah, uh, because of COVID, there had been a collateral damage. And collateral damage was there for not only for HIV or tuberculosis, but it was for many other uh, diseases which was negatively impacted. A lot of people could not come forward to get tested. A lot of people who were tested positive could not uh, find treatment immediately. Uh, fortunately, in India, our National AIDS Control Organization was forthright. And they, uh, before the uh, peak of the uh, pandemic itself, they uh, um, uh, informed the, all the uh, ART centers, which were which are uh, made for free ART supply, to provide ART to people who are coming from even private practitioners. Uh, they made uh, enough arrangement, uh, and uh, this uh, differentiated service delivery system (DSD) was initiated during the COVID uh, by NACO. Uh, they provided multi-month uh, packs rather than a month; they could give for three months. So some steps were taken, but despite that, PrEP was not available, PP was not available. A lot of people could not go out for testing. Testing facilities were not available. Uh, most of the health uh, uh, establishment were 100% uh, to the full capacity were blocked only for COVID and COVID. So I, I think in this kind of scenario, uh, we were impacted. And that, that's the reason that 1990-90 scenario uh, goal could not be met. But however, a uh, lot of countries, they tried their best. Uh, they may be just lagging behind by a year. Uh, secondly, when we talk about 90-90-90 or 95-95-95 or even 100-100-100, these yeah. are the goals set to put all of us in action mode. 
it may not be finally 100% achievement at all. But if we don't set the goal, I think machinery doesn't work. Uh, all our particularly developing country machineries, they work on goal and uh, set targets. So I think uh, that's the reason we are impacted, but we will overcome that. So when we look at even before the COVID-19 pandemic came in, there were still 10 million people in the world who required ART. So, and when we look at children below the age of 14 years, we have just about 52% of children who have access to ART. So there are huge gaps in provision of ART to the general, uh, to the HIV, uh, to people who are living with HIV. So uh, there may have been progress, some progress, like Dr. Gilada said, we would not have achieved the targets, but there would have definitely been some progress if it had not been for the COVID-19 pandemic. When we look at India, uh, the statistics say that about 74% of people uh, living with HIV know their status. And 86% of this 74% are on ART. And again, another 86% of this 86% are virally suppressed. So there has been some progress, but definitely COVID-19 has impacted that progress that was happening. Any other question? Anne has to go. Thank yeah, you, Anne. Go. Yeah, there's a question for me. I can take it, but yeah, I have can. an appointment now that I'm supposed to be at. So, Any question oh. for her? Uh, no, and if you want to answer this question, you can. I think, I think we've had good answers. So oh, because people did not see yeah, your face. They did not see audio. my face. They can, they can see my face now. Um, so there are not only did we not meet the, the targets, but I think buried within our failure to meet the targets is something that sometimes we lose sight of, which is that the, if, we, if our target was 90 and we didn't meet 10%, often those 10% are the most vulnerable. And so the, the people that we are not getting in 90, 90, 90, or 95, 95, 95, we're really missing the most vulnerable. So I think that really underscores why we really need to get to 100, 100, or 100. And in, in many journeys, they say that, you know, it's the last step that's the most difficult. And I think that we really need to focus on these last, whatever it is, 10%, 5%, 2%, they really often are the most vulnerable and the most difficult to reach. And they will require really our, our concerted effort uh, in the North and in the South um, to get to 100, 100, 100. Uh, Dr. Jyoti, if you have two minutes, there is a question directed to the north and the south. So I think okay. both of you can answer. And Nahid Khalid says, uh, thank you for such good presentations. Do you think countries in the global south should join hands for R&D and rollout of treatments with the global north, like Bangladesh, India, Brazil, South Africa, Kenya, for example? Or will we keep on depending solely on the global north? So your comments on that? So I think that's a very good question. And I, 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 you know, we spoke about South to South collaboration. I think North to South collaboration is something that, that can be very, very much stressed and actually has been, I think, working hand in glove in uh, vaccine, HIV vaccine research. So for example, South Africa had a very strong uh, called SAVI, South African Vaccine Initiative. Uh, to develop vaccines. They have been very strong partners uh, with the North in uh, study design and testing of HIV vaccines. And we, I can really hope that in the next years, we will have a vaccine candidate that we can roll down to places like India that will be uh, fantastic and using their capacity to make vaccines for the world. So as they have done for, for ART. So I think that's one example of of how the North and South can work together. Um, there, this is probably not something that every country in the global South can do. And so there'll probably have to be different strategies. Some will be more on the R&D side, as you said. Um, some will be more on the implementation science side, as I, I mentioned, you know, that, that there can be strategies that are developed in the global North or in middle income, income countries that have to be modified to use in lower income countries. And this is where we really rely on some of our partners in the global South to really modify things and make them fit their situation, make them fit their populations so that we can achieve the um, 100, 100, 100 goals that we so desire. 
very well said and dr gilada from the global south actually uh, when we are talking about south south collaboration it is not against north <laughs> yeah, because a lot of time people think that uh, we are trying to divide the world into north and south and south is against north no south want to be with north to give us a simple example there are thousand people who are uh, to be fed and there are only cooks in the northern part of the world and there are no no cooks in the southern part of the world northern, northern part of the world will first try to fill the 300 out of 1000 maybe that, that is the ratio of population they would like to fill the tummy of this 300 people and then remaining will come to remaining 700 of the southern part but if southern part is also part of active movement then we can feed our people you can feed your people your burden will lessen and that's the way uh, the medicine will work that's the way uh, the uh, equity will work uh, secondly you know, north must understand one thing this is a very simple logic till your neighbors are peaceful you cannot be at peace so you only look at your peace it is not going to be solution you look at global peace you look at global equity you look at inequalities otherwise there will be a very strong moment from those which are equal and they would storm the remaining part of the world so i think we should not allow that kind of anarchy to happen we should try to be caring each other and in that reason uh, for that reason south south collaboration is going to be a very strong moment and that will be aiding the north is not against the north okay uh, thank you very much. yes please add okay. all right yeah. thank you and thank, thank you for including me yeah yeah but you are right this is prime time there are many meetings unfortunately yeah yeah <laughs> time okay thank yeah. you all So with this, we come to the conclusion of this very vibrant press conference, which was jointly organized by Aid Society of India and Organized Medicine Academy Guild. My sincere thanks to all the speakers and the participants for being with us here today, for finding time to be with us here today, even though online. Goodbye, Namaste, stay safe, and stay healthy. Thank you.